Hello everyone, welcome back to Hexen. I was talking about this. We will see how this works soon. Also a very cool scripted event. And in the last episode, we picked up Wraith Verge, which I have no doubt I will be using with great prejudice some point in the future. But for now, we'll just uh, wander around. We'll enjoy the very excellent rotating... Oh god. <laughs> oh god. We're going to spend all our blue mana over right now, apparently. Just checking there's nothing behind us there. I'm pretty sure those things move backwards as well. Oh! They make those go down. Drink up, lad! Uh, that probably just activates those. Yeah, we can't use it, which is another cool thing. There's a switch that you can't press because you don't need to. Man, things that... Because you, you can play Doom, is what I'm thinking, and you won't see these sorts of things. Um, by comparison, this is all very advanced stuff. I'm really looking forward to using Wraith first, though. But I don't think it really is worth using on a couple of Athrits. So I press that, which bizarrely causes that to go down. A little bit trepid about going up there. Um, maybe we'll use a mana free weapon for now. Try and conserve some of our precious. Like, it's the only thing that's going to keep us alive. Besides health. So there we go. This one actually operated independently of those, which also pleases me. Oh, jeez, I'm up here now. I see a serpent. Let's, um. Well, we're in for a penny and for a pound now. Well, now's the time to use Wraith Verge, I guess. Let's see what happens here. Ah, shit. Is it hitting? Is it hitting? Wow. Okay, let's see if it can actually do something. Let's watch. That's very cool. I wonder how long they last for. It uses a lot of mana, though. Don't know if that was a great idea, but it definitely got us out of that scrape. So <laughs> I'm standing by it for now. Those are open, so that lets us out of there. Pick up some flechettes, apparently. We must have used them in the previous episode, and I forgot. Well, I do remember using them. In fact, I have them selected still. Also, not very useful against centaurs, which is true of basically everything. I feel like there's a reason to have been down there besides... Yeah, I can see a switch in there. Just having a look at the map, you can see that there's a switch in this wall. Push! <clears throat> Okie dokie, that makes those go down. Maybe it does something else too. We actually have uh, an amount of health that divides by 10. So that would be a great time to go and pick up all these crystal vials and not feel like we're not min-maxing perfectly. Min-max, min-max, min-max. Yep. Okay, that switch just activates those, which is where we've already been. You can even see them rotating on the map. Very cool. I guess we go down that... Look. <laughs> There's a choice of basically two things here. We either go... In here somewhere, which I think opens up later, so we'll have a look. Or we go down to this other one, which terrifies me because it's basically an unknown quantity on the other side of this, which is very obviously a lift. Does this move it? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Dear. There is a portal down there, so at least we found something new and we get to zone and therefore save. Combined mana. Whoa, sh isn't it? Okay. Do you think it'll go if we step on it? I'm a little bit concerned about trying to get from there to there in the time that we have. Let's try it. No. Okie dokie then. So we're going to have to take some damage, I believe. Just, just no damage. Okay, good. It's the benefit of always run, I guess. Kind of expected this. Hard to imagine that I uh, wouldn't have just used that. That's free. Okay. Right, here goes. Wraith Verge. Oh, God. <laughs> no, bad. I do like this level, actually. This level um, is one of the ones that has inspired me in the past to make sort of warehousing type levels. In fact, there's a level like this in one of the Dooms, which. Um, I've always liked making levels that are either very close and intricate, like this one, or. Uh, that have some sort of mind fuck going on. I remember making... Excuse me, I'm talking. I remember making a um, 
like a, a non-Euclidean Unreal Tournament level back in the day. Which is another game with an incredible engine that was way ahead of its time. But, uh, this is not it, so we will not be talking about it just now. Or we might do a little bit. Ah! Remember Unreal Tournament, I believe, came out... Unreal Tournament. No. Unreal came out, I think, the same year as Quake 2. Well, very close in time, anyway. I, at least I have it in my mind that these two things are, uh, sort of congruent. Whereas, but, but uh, uh, Quake 2 was a very rigid engine, I suppose, is the best way of calling it. It's, um, it's very much like a, just an extended Doom engine. It was a completely different engine, obviously. <clears throat> if you had the opportunity to play with those engines, the editors especially. Ooh. I don't like the fact there's always these things around here. If you had the opportunity to play with making levels for these various engines, you could really get a feel for how limited you were in one and how flexible the other one could be. In this versus if you were to make a, an Unreal level, you'd be you know, you'd be playing with all of the really awesome tricks and tools that he had available to you. Whereas in, I remember in uh, Quake 2, I tried to make a simple warehouse, as I was saying originally, um, with a lift that would go to the floor that you were on when you pushed the button. Right? Very simple um, idea that you're at a lift and you want to push the button and you want the lift to appear right there. This would have been a great time for Wraith Verge, I think. It was basically impossible. I couldn't figure out a way of doing it um, in the engine, whereas the same concept in an Unreal Engine, you just do it. It's just there. It's part of it. It's already included in the engine for you. Interesting. Right, so here's what we're looking for. This is the... Uh, Apparently, I should have been using my third weapon. This is a sapphire. This is obviously a trap because I've played games before. Well, that just goes to show you quite how revolutionary a game Hexen was. Things that were obviously traps were not traps. Here's what I was talking about by the floors in an earlier episode, by the way. The floors are always lined up. Which is a shame because it ruins a little thing like that. You, there's no way of rotating that texture. Which honestly is something that... Oh. Man, the delay on clicking there is uh, a bit silly. Can I get you? Can I get you? I think you're stuck in there. Which is fine. It does make you difficult to hit. Let's just punch it. <laughs> I haven't heard these things make any of the noises that I was saying that they made, by the way. Uh, I suspect that perhaps I confuse them with the ones from Heretic. Or there's a second type. Oh, oh, help! I keep pressing all the buttons to change weapons. You can probably see it in the bottom right hand corner above my HP where I'm. Uh, sorry, above my mana where I'm just selecting the weapons and I'm just pressing all the buttons trying to find the one I want. Because I'm panicking slightly. Don't worry. We all succeed. We always will. We are the strongest character in the whole game. Not quite true, but we do have the benefit of a certain improved intelligence. It's interesting that they created the walls such that you could adjust the textures, basically to any extent. Um, well, you could move them one pixel. <clears throat> at a time in any direction, but they didn't do the same thing to the floor textures, which just doesn't really make any sense. Maybe rotating the textures was way more difficult back then? I don't know. You'd think that you just sort of take the polygons and rotate them in the engine. Of course, the original engine wasn't necessarily made of, hello, made of polygons. I'm actually using Firestorm here because I'm running out of blue mana. Even though there is some right there. I am aware. So we've picked up a sapphire. Sapphire is going to go in the 
the thing, the big circle, the orrery sort of thing that I was showing you. Start of the episode. <clears throat> One of these is going to open, no doubt. <clears throat> um, and if you collect <clears throat> all of them, pardon. <clears throat> oh, I love this though. You can push the damn wall. Honestly, whoever thought of this needs to be given a medal. <clears throat> I also thought that was such a cool effect, and I'd forgotten about it until literally just now. Can you push this one then? No. No. I could not tell you how they did that. Can't remember. But again, it's the sort of thing you have to cream over. It's such a good effect. Hello. We'll just keep. Uh, we'll use blue mana now. Okay. I approve and agree. I'm stuck. <clears throat> Don't mind grabbing a bit of HP from these things when they uh, teleport slightly too close. Also, being able to cause them to flinch while you're draining their HP is very valuable. What do you think this is supposed to represent? I was talking about this in a previous episode, as you remember. Um, what am I looking at? I'm just sort of accepting it. But I feel like I shouldn't be. I just stepped in lava to no uh, effect. How... How did they do that? In, a, in an engine like Doom, the fact that they managed to implement a... Um, rotating pillar like that in the first place is cool. Being able to push it. It must be just that you push the side in a certain direction. Oh jeez. Monster closets. Hexen, I thought you were better than this. Sure enough. Oh, you were just hurting me like shit. Okay, I understand. Like the monster closet is uh, a necessary tool in a game like uh, Heretic or Doom. Uh, it's not quite. I was talking about the teleport trick that they did in, I think, Doom 2. Where they have um, enemies that become activated and therefore walk on teleporters. Get teleported to you. But Hexen had this scripting engine that could just arbitrarily summon enemies from nothing. So this one's fire and this one's water. So that makes some sense. And the water one apparently has health in it. And the fire one had essentially a attack power, so like weapon health. Nothing, nothing there. Okay. I think we're done then. We picked up two gems, which we will go back there, and put in the in the star thingy. The, the, the orbit displayer. I know that there's another thing around here, so I'm going to find it. So confusing. Because um, when you when we walked in, there was a pillar. This one. <clears throat> with symbols on it. Which I believe is activated by this. Oh, God. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Well, that's weird. I'm already dead, so I'm being squished. <laughs> Well, you know what we do. We cut this out, and I'll see you on the other side. All right, here we go again. I did use Wraith Verge uh, just now to clear out the room that I originally said I should have used Wraith Verge to clear out. Good grief. Wraith Verge is amazing. It almost literally one-shot that room and the other room, which I will try to put an overlay of so you can see right now. Uh, so if you're very lucky, you will currently be watching... How awesome it was. I didn't actually, you'll note, pay attention. Um, I didn't sit and watch, but I did the second time. So I just wanted anything to die. It basically one shot the room. In both cases, it only left a couple of uh, a couple of bishops alive, which is kind of preposterous. Powerful. You can see what 42% health was talking about. Definitely appreciate having this weapon on my side. Keep pulling this. Uh, I love how it completely jibs the corpse, by the way. Because the corpse got trapped in the ceiling. So it's just squished corpse because 
That's a that's attention to detail. You have to program that stuff in. That doesn't just happen, you know? Right, we'll use some more of these. Uh, and hope for the best. Of course, why am I looking on the map for health? This isn't Isaac. Oh, no. Suspect that would hurt. So I don't want to step on it just in case. Like, it's not going to keep going up and down just for the sake of the... Uh... Oh, God. Just keep it at bay. Keep it confused. Yes. Good job. Keep using these. That's fine. Don't forget we have full health several times over. I think this is another Wraith version, to be honest. Let's watch it again. Boom. It just flies around looking for stuff and it kills everyone. Oh, I think these might not have been in proximity. That's a shame. Didn't do the... Uh, wasn't the coup that I expected it to be. But we can still do some damage here. Apparently it works a lot better on open rooms where the wraiths can find their target more easily. Ow, ow, ow. I appreciate these old games. By the way, the lights came on. Just saying. Uh, where... Uh, okay. The difficulty is ramped up by just having more things. The AI is pretty bad, right? Please change it. And instead of having excellent AI and making it super difficult that way, they just make more baddies. That's really gratifying, to be honest. Um, I was playing Bioshock Infinite, and I haven't finished it. And the reason I haven't finished it is that I cannot get on with combat. I find it really, really cumbersome. And other people have like, agreed with me about this. Oh, I was right. It does open. Um, or at least said that they, they understand what I'm saying. I've got Firestorm back, so there's some more green miner at least. Uh, because, you know, in this game, when you run around a bunch, you turn around and then everything that was there just now is still there. You know, you... The, the enemies may teleport a certain distance or they'll walk around and do things like that. But by and large, if the enemy was there, I just press 5 and something happened. Yeah, totally worth it. Still going. Oh. I've used an invisibility. Emerald Planet 1, Ruby Planet, does not have a 1. That implies there's more than one Emerald Planet. Also, I found a blue planet, which is Bloomberg. Well, now we're down here. Very well. That's probably supposed to just chuck you into the bishops. Uh, what was I saying? The combat. In this game, mostly when you turn around, something's maybe wandered a little bit. You can dodge around, you can run around, it's like a, an arcade sort of game. The enemies don't really make that much effort to get around you. The AI is not that smart. That was still going from last time. I do appreciate that. Whereas, in a game like Bioshock Infinite, the combat is such that... I'm picturing the um, Patriots, if you've ever played the game. Where you're supposed to get behind them and shoot them in the vulnerable part, which is the belt that drives them on their back. But I always find when I've, whenever I was fighting a Patriot, if I turn around, like I'd run around a, a pillar or something, or a large section, and I turn around and the Patriot would be gone. It would not be nearly where I, where I would have expected it to be, based on what I knew about its movement and you know, where I left it. I expected it to just sort of follow me round at its slow speed and then I'd be behind it, you know, ready to win. It was never the case. And in an open... Ooh, hello. In an open arena sort of battle, like the ones where there's a lot of sky rails and stuff, I keep turning around and finding that I'm being shot by something I haven't seen, or that the thing I was about to fire at has gone, or the cover I'm in does not actually give me any cover whatsoever in the first place. It's all things like that. And I don't... Like, I'm not trying to be whiny about it, I'm just saying that... That was a great noise. Hmm. 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 Red one goes there. Uh, I just I couldn't get on with it. The combat system in Bioshock Infinite did not fit in my brain. 
And I had some trouble to a similar extent, just with uh, the original Bioshock in the first place. This is obviously... Okay, am I supposed to be allowed in here? Pretty sure I'm not supposed to be able to get through there. But I did, so... Whatever. Um... Yay, 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 I'm stuck on the thing. <laughs> Run. Collect. I'm uh, using it to cause them to put their shields up so they stop attacking me. Uh, yeah, the original Bioshocks also had a similar sort of confusion to their combat. And I think the combat was made more difficult in harder difficulty settings by increasing the, the capabilities, like the AI capabilities, rather than doing something sensible like just making there be more enemies to shoot. So having a, a game where there's a lot of enemies to shoot, but they're really simple. Like, their attack patterns are simple, but maybe the way that they... Like their, their movement patterns are simple, but their attacks can be varyingly complex. Like, the bishops with their helical attacks and their strange blur that means that you can't quite follow them. So I'm hoping that down here something's changed. No. We pulled that. Bin down these two. Bin down these two. Let's have a look at the map. I've been in there. There's a whole section back there. That's probably the end. Nothing's open here, right? Right, there. Did I pull all of these, though? I think that opened up the first section in the first place, so... Presumably, yes. Right. Um, it does imply that there's something else in that other map, which is called the Refectory. So it seems to be the only way I can find to get anywhere. Etin teleport in, probably over there somewhere. I'm also noting that over here, on the very right hand side of the map, there's a way through the back. Can you see that? Maybe there's something in this downstairs cellar that I have not fully noticed. Oh, there's one. The height of the actor thing is uh, the fix to that bug that was a problem in Doom. Having been fixed is uh, super helpful. There's mana down here, but I don't really want to want to min-max that as much as possible as well. Oops, I failed to. <laughs> okay. Um, it's not actually turned out to be a huge problem, because every time I die, I get a little bit of a better idea about how the whole thing works anyway, so... I guess it's okay. There's a way up there, I know it. I'm, I'm just saying basically, that the arcade style of combat, where everything just moves around and has simple patterns and shoots you. So much easier to deal with. There has to be another thing, right? Because I know these open up, but surely they open up after we fill in the orrery. Here's another one of those things, I'm like, what is it? It's just some courtyard with statues and water. What's it supposed to represent? What would it be if whatever has befallen this world <clears throat> had not befallen this world? Or is this here because of what befell the world? Which is presumably the uh, very obvious antagonist to this whole series, whose name I continually forget. Who, by the way, is going to be a constant use of Wraith Verge, so hopefully we can find... Plenty more of those mana things. Let's have a look around here a bit more, I guess. If that's... Let's turn follow mode off and walk around. I'm seeing no extra switches. There's one, two, three switches that we've pulled. One of them got us into here. One of them got us into there, and one of them got us down there. We pulled that switch. We've been through that teleporter. We've been in there and got that. I genuinely think that there is nothing else in this place, but which is silent refectory. Yeah, that was right. That was right. It wasn't very silent until I came along with Wraith Verge, that's for sure. Hmm. We've pulled these switches. Yeah. I'm not sure what that last switch did. Probably opened this. That would be right, yeah. Okay. 
So you actually have to pull all those switches. It's not like the sequence. That just takes us back into the water and fire zone bit. <clears throat> I want to light that. <laughs> I've got this torch as well, but I'm not really sure if I have any use for the torch. I think by pressing 5 I've used my um, icon of the defender, which made me... I think it made me immune to damage and also spectral, like ethereal. I have to wait for this to finish. Before you can pull this switch. There's nothing else. Well, I think I've been waffling on for long enough anyway. So, I'm going to leave you on this elevator here, and I will see you in the next episode when hopefully we figure out where to go next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then.